I was trying to make another joke, but it didn't. I, I lost it. He asked me again. How many data books have you done? Uh, this is my 13th data book. Um, I joke it's a teenager, but it's turning 33 this year. We all want our children and youth to have a bright future. How do we accomplish this? Everyone, national, local leaders, public systems, nonprofits, community members, and parents must work to ensure children get a healthy start, grow up with adults and in communities that support their development, and have the education and preparation necessary to succeed as adults. We tend to think of all these opportunities as improving the well being of children. In truth, thousands of factors can contribute or detract from the well being of children. Just think about the factors and experiences that influenced your own upbringing. In addition, we know enduring barriers to opportunity continue to affect the well being of children of color today. Since 1990, the Annie E. Case Foundation's Kids Count Data Book has tracked the well being of children in the United States. To do this, we created a research based set of key indicators that provide a snapshot on how kids are faring. We call this the Kids Count Index. Now, all data is not created equal, so the Kids Count Index only includes indicators for which there's reliable and unbiased data collection at the national and state level. Using the latest index calculations, the 2022 Kids Count Data Book captures how children are faring just before the pandemic or right as it began. It also includes data on how kids were faring a decade earlier for comparison. In addition, it ranks states in several areas. This isn't intended to foster competition, but to show that states with strong public investments in children often rank higher than states without that level of support. Let's get into the 2022 results. The Kids Count Index consists of a number of indicators that provide a picture of child well being. We group these data into four domains, which each have four indicators. The domains are economic well being, education, health, and family and community. We rank states in each of these four domains and combine them to give each state an overall ranking. The latest data reveal encouraging national trends in child well being, with improvements in 10 out of the 16 indicators. For example, more parents were economically secure and fewer were burdened by high housing costs, and more teens graduated from high school and delayed childbearing. Overall, the biggest gains were in the economic well being of families and children many potentially benefiting from robust federal supports that started in 2020 in response to the pandemic. This year, New England states hold the top two spots for overall child well-being. Massachusetts ranks first, followed by New Hampshire. Minnesota is in third place. Mississippi at 48th, Louisiana 49th, and New Mexico 50th are the three lowest ranked states. States in Appalachia, as well as the Southeast and Southwest, where families have the lowest level of household income, are at the bottom of the overall rankings. In fact, except for Alaska, the 17 lowest ranked states are in these regions. When we talk about the economic well being of kids, we mostly focus on the financial stability of their parents or caregivers and how it might limit or boost a child's upbringing. The Kids Count Index also includes data on teens who might be disconnected from opportunity by not being in school or working. The economic data for the 2022 Kids Count Data Book is coming from the 2016-2020 five-year American Community Survey estimates, so it doesn't capture today's concerns about inflation. Despite this, we know that heading into the pandemic, all four economic well-being indicators had improved. Fewer kids were living in poverty and more parents were employed. The most improvement was in the percentage of kids living in households that spend more than 30% of their income on housing, which represents a significant financial burden for families. Nonetheless, according to our latest data, one in six children in the United States lived in poverty. The best states for children in terms of economic well being were in the Midwest. Nebraska, North Dakota, and Minnesota were the top three spots. New Mexico, Mississippi, and Louisiana were at the bottom. 
While the national child poverty rate is 17%, in these three states, it ranges from 26 to 28%. Two of the four education indicators in the Kids Count data book show improvement, fourth grade reading proficiency and high school graduation. Notably, 86% of high school students graduated on time in the 2018-19 school year, which is an all-time high for the nation and something to be celebrated. While education data in this year's data book predate the COVID-19 pandemic, Experts anticipate that virtual learning and social isolation will likely increase disconnection from school and worsen educational achievement in the coming years. The Casey Foundation plans to keep a close watch on this issue. Topping the education rankings this year is New Jersey at number one, followed by Massachusetts and Connecticut. Overall, four New England states were in the top five. Louisiana, Alaska, and New Mexico were at the bottom of this year's rankings. The Kids Count data book saw mixed results in the health domain. Although fewer kids lacked access to health insurance, we saw increases in the percentage of babies born with a low birth weight, the child and teen death rate, and the percent of children and teens who were overweight. The child and teen death rate is of particular concern. In 2020, the rate was 28 deaths per 100,000 children, the highest seen since 2008. The rise reflects a large increase in homicides and drug overdoses. In fact, for the first time ever, firearm-related fatalities are the leading cause of death in children. The New England states of Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Vermont are in the top three spots. Texas, which has one of the largest child populations in the nation, is at 48 in our health rankings, with Louisiana and Mississippi at 49 and 50, respectively. Trends in the family and community domain are mostly encouraging. The teen birth rate improved, a smaller percentage of children had parents without a high school diploma, and we also saw fewer kids living in high poverty communities. In 2020, the teen birth rate continued its steady decline since 2007. In terms of family and community, Utah ranks at the top of the Kids Count data book. It has the lowest rate of single parent families and one of the lowest rates of children living in high poverty neighborhoods. New Hampshire and Vermont rank second and third. At the bottom are New Mexico, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Where families live matters, and we should ensure all children have opportunities to succeed, regardless of their zip code. And that's our overview of the 2022 Kids Count data book. In all, the report has more than 1,700 national and state data points, along with our exclusive rankings. We encourage you to visit our website for more resources. Visit www.aecf.org databook. In addition to the data book, I work with our grantees year round to provide thousands of other statistics on kids, youth, and young adults in the Casey Foundation's Kids Count Data Center. Check it out at datacenter.kidscount.org.